Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So, in our last video, we added victory conditions and defeat conditions. As you can see here, it says victory, and that is because we have zero sick NPCs in our game, which means that the victory conditions were met. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to introduce buttons that we can click. But before we can do that, we need a way to be able to sense the mouse input. So where is the mouse and are we clicking? Uh, are we hovering over something? We need a way to tell all of this. So today's video is going to be all about mouse input. And I don't think we'll have the time to do the actual button. That will be the next video. But we're going to make sure that we can have mouse input. So let's get to that. I say find your input class and let's extend this further. So currently we are implementing the key listener, which gives us these methods that we're using now uh, to be able to tell which key keyboard keys we're using. We're also going to add a mouse listener, just like the key listener and a mouse motion listener. So the methods inside of the mouse listener is going to be able to tell us if we're clicking or not. And as you might have guessed, the mouse motion listener is going to tell us where is our mouse on the screen currently. So alt enter and implement all of these methods. And they are quite a lot and we're not going to use all of them. So for example, mouse clicked doesn't really have the behavior that we want. So we're actually not going to use mouse clicked. Instead, uh, if you've used some buttons, you know that most often when you first press down on your mouse button, it, it doesn't register the event immediately. The event registers when you release your mouse button, right? So if you first press down the button and then you realize, oh no, I was not supposed to press this button, then you can usually just slide away from that button and release and no harm is done. So that is really the behavior that we want. Therefore, in mouse released, we're going to register the click event, or we're going to say that we have clicked. And in mouse dragged and mouse moved, we're going to update the position and all of that. But we'll get to that. So first, we need some variables. So we're going to make a private position, and I'm going to call this the pointer position. We need to uh, import that. All right, and then we want a boolean that is mouse clicked and a boolean that is mouse pressed. So this is of course whether we clicked once and this is if the button is currently down. All right, let's just set the pointer position to something. I'm just gonna initialize it to an empty position, zero, zero. All right, so where do we put these? Actually, let's just quickly alt insert and make getters for all of those three. So we can use it later. Okay, and now when we press, that means that mouse pressed is true. When we release, as we talked about before, we want mouse click to be true. We want mouse pressed to be false. And now, in none of these, we're not going to use mouse entered. We're not going to use mouse exited. Mouse dragged and mouse moved are only going to update our position. We're going to do that soon. But we're never going to set mouse clicked to false here. So there is a problem. This uh, listener or this input, it doesn't happen at the same rate as our updates. So this is outside of our updates. These events are registered in a different thread, I guess, not the thread running our game. So that means we can never be sure that either we get the clicked, the click exactly when we clicked, or maybe that we're actually getting it several times before we manage to set it to false. So the way that we're going to fix that is we're going to, in each update, at the end of our update method in our state, we're going to say 
I'm sorry, void. I'm gonna say clear uh, mouse click. And here we'll do mouse clicked is false. So that way we can make sure that at least we never get one click registered several times in our update loops. So you'll see what I mean. Let's go down here to mouse dragged and we are gonna say that pointer position. Maybe we should just name it mouse position since everything else is called mouse. I just use shift F6 to rename it. So mouse position is a new position and we'll get the E get point get x e get point get y so that's it let's duplicate it i press ctrl d to duplicate it and let's do that inside of the mouse moved as well so now we are registering all of the events we know when we are pressing our mouse we know where it is we know if we're clicking let's close it off it won't work right out of the gate though we need to go into our display. So our display is a JFrame and we've added a key listener to that JFrame. However, our mouse listener, we want that to be added to the canvas. So add mouse listener and we are going to add input since it implements mouse listener. Canvas knows what that means. Also add mouse motion listener input. Now we're going to be able to tell from our game where the mouse is and whether we've clicked. The canvas is going to tell that for us. And the canvas is, of course, displaying our game. So let's just first find the state. And I'm just going to say now here in the updates, say handle mouse input. All right, let's generate that method so here we go we have the mouse input and whatever we do before here after we do it we're gonna say input uh, clear mouse click so that will always happen last and then we can say if let's see input is mouse clicked if it is Let's, for now, just display some text to the screen. Mouse click at position. And actually, let's do the string format thing that we learned about. At position, and I'm gonna say percent %d, and percent %d. We can actually say, you know, uh, x and y. And now we need to give it the input, get mouse position, Let's say int x and input get mouse position in y. All right, let's try that out. All right, mouse click that position 309, 269. So this should be the position in our window. So if we would manage to get all the way up here, it should be 0, 0. And we can use that to our advantage because that means this is in the same space as all of our things on screen. And this will make it easier for us in the next video when we'll be making our first button. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Hey, Dua.